Welcome to Silverhand Studios, I'm Chris. In the last episode, we took a look at the new layout for our custom movement design. And in this episode, we're gonna start cutting metal. Now that we have a blueprint for the work, we can start working in metal. The new plate I'm working with is three millimeter thick nickel silver. I've got a larger piece than needed uh, to make it easier to hold in the lathe later on. I'm using CA glue to glue the existing main plate to the new bridge material. CA glue is a really effective way of holding the two plates together while we're doing the initial layout of the pin holes and screw holes. Later on, we won't need them because we'll have the pins and screws to hold the bridge in place. Here you'll see that I've marked the important holes in red and black. The black holes are for the pins and the red holes are for the screws. The brass tool you see me using here is called an uprighting tool. It's a classic watchmaking tool that doesn't get any use today in modern manufacturing. The pins on the top and bottom are perfectly aligned, which allows me to center an existing hole from the main plate and then mark that hole on the bridge plate on the bottom. The biggest advantage of this layout method is that I don't actually need to know what the dimensions are of where each of these holes are located. Because I have the existing main plate, I can just transfer those holes over onto the bridge material. If we were going to be making a large number of these watches, we would take the time to accurately measure where each of these holes are located and then use a machine with a digital readout on it to allow us to quickly mark and drill out each of the hole locations. Because very few people know what these uprighting pools are anymore, you often see them for a very reasonable price on places like eBay and in a small shop where you're making one-off parts or maybe you know a few of a handmade movement, they're indispensable tools. Once all the hole locations have been transferred onto the bridge plate, we can separate the two plates by soaking them in acetone. That'll dissolve the CA glue that's there. Here I'm deepening the marks that I've made on the uprighting tool using an automatic center punch. There are a few different ways that you can drill out the holes on the new bridge plate. This is a 10 millimeter Derbyshire watchmaker's lathe and I'm going to use it for drilling out one of the pin holes. The new bridge plate has been mounted on a watchmaker's faceplate. It has three clamps on it and it allows me to move that bridge plate around and center the plate on the hole that I'm going to be drilling into. There are a few different ways that you can center that hole. Here I'm using a wobble stick to center that hole on the lathe. I'm gonna do a separate video on how you can use a wobble stick to accurately center holes. Once we've centered the plate around the hole that we want to drill, we can install the tailstock and install the appropriate drill bit. Here I'm using a 1.1 millimeter carbide drill bit. I'm also using a dial indicator on the back of the tailstock so that I can accurately judge how deep the drill bit is going into the plate. In this case, the pinholes do not go all the way through the plate. And so I need to make sure that I don't go too far into it. There's really not a lot of room for error here and you don't want to drill through a hole which shouldn't be drilled through. Here you can see me setting up the drill bit on the surface of the actual plate itself, the bridge plate. And then I can zero the dial indicator and that allows me to know exactly how deep it is that I'm drilling. Anytime you've set up a new part on the lathe, it is important to give the whole part and set up a turn by hand once or twice, just to ensure that everything is locked down and that nothing is going to run into your part as it starts turning. A delicate touch is needed when you are drilling and it's important that you pay attention to how the cutter feels as it's going into the plate. Be patient and don't apply a lot of pressure. You want to make the tool do the work. If you apply too much pressure, then you're going to force the tool in and in the case of these small drill bits, you're going to snap them. Once that hole's been drilled, we can move the plate onto the next hole and use the wobble stick to center the next point on the lathe. The lathe and wobble stick are not the fastest method for doing this. 
Uh, if you have an accurate drill press, then you will be able to drill the plates out much faster than you can on the lathe. This is a Cameron drill press, which is designed specifically as a precision drill press for small bits. Apply a little bit of downward pressure on the drill bit into the center punched hole with the machine off, and then just gently turn the drill bit in reverse by hand. That will automatically center that punch hole on the drill bit and move the plate into proper alignment. From there, you can hold the plate down by hand, turn on the drill, apply a little bit of lubricant, and then drill down to the re required depth. As with on the lathe, I am using a 1.1 millimeter carbide drill bit, and the lubricant that I'm using is mineral oil. When drilling through holes, such as ones for the screws, it is important to have some kind of a backing plate underneath the plate that you're drilling through. When the drill bit is about to break through the material, it will grab the drill bit if there's no backing plate there. And in the process of grabbing that drill bit, there's a really good chance that it's gonna snap it. Once you finish drilling all of your holes, it's important to clean your plate afterwards. I use an ultrasonic cleaner and make sure that all of the holes are cleaned of swarp and lubricant. And finally, here you can see the plate we've been drilling, as well as the main plate, which we've been using as a reference, and the original ETA 6497 movement. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing. If you know someone who may be interested in what I'm doing, then please pass it along to them.